Well, that changes everything. <laughs> hey guys, Kevin Matt for Colony, Season 1, Episode 4, Blind Spot. And holy shit, this episode was huge. I mean, we got some really big revelations in this episode, and there are some really crazy scenes in this episode, and especially that ending. We will definitely get into that because very interesting stuff going on there. But let's just get into this episode because by far the best episode of the season, really. And I think as the show goes on, it's just going to get better and better. Colony seems to be one of those shows where every episode is better than the last. And let's just get into this episode because I really loved it. And the way we start off especially, very hard to watch because we see this SWAT-type team of Red Hats. They're going into a school violently attacking students, shirts, searching their lockers, taking them away, and of course we think of things like, you know, school shootings and things that have happened in schools, and to just know that this is like an everyday thing for them is insane, because it is. That's what the Red Hats do. They just, they create chaos. But the biggest part of this is that we realize that one of the Red Hats is none other than Broussard. Broussard is one of the Red Hats, and he seems to be pretty ruthless, and yes, it's his job, but he seems to really have no remorse over what he does, and it's very interesting. We see Broussard alerts his resistance buddies that the patterns of the clabber is again clearer while Will pays a visit to Phyllis at Homeland Security, and he's slowly but surely gaining the respect of Phyllis and his colleagues, which is good for him and also good for that deal he's gunning for, of course, which is getting his son back. But back to the Red Hats real quickly. Just a really crazy way to start the episode, but a very good way as well. I mean, it really just shows that as the episode goes on, how dangerous this world really is. I mean, this is a broken world, we have to remember, mainly because of, of course, the, uh, the hosts and what's going on with them, but, uh... You know, the, the raps, I mean, host raps, or whatever you call them. But basically, you know, it's just a really crazy world. I think it really showed that well here. So right away, we see Bruce already alerts resistance buddies that the patterns of Clabber is getting clear while Will pays a visit to Phyllis at Homeland Security. And basically, Katie, meanwhile, is doing her part of the resistance by staging a fire in her own home. I'm not kidding you. She stages a fire. So after putting it out, she calls the fire department. And when Will arrives, he's angry, worried to find Homeland Security searching his house. And uh, Will, in the meantime, is trying to find Geronimo. He doesn't know where Geronimo is. Is, and he's very angry and worried to find Homeland Security searching his house. Clearly, everyone's now suspicious of everyone else, and Jennifer, who believes Katie is being personal, takes her down to headquarters, and uh, what's very interesting about this, of course, is the fact that Katie did this all on her own. Nobody told her to do this. This wasn't something that she planned. She clearly did this to get a meeting with Phyllis. It's clear that's why she did this here. That's what her motivation was, and, uh, that's why she wanted this, because she wanted to snuff at her husband's boss so she can pass on the information, and basically Phyllis asked what happened, and Katie lies accordingly that she was folding laundry, she ran downstairs, she found the fire had started, and she didn't get a good look at the man who entered her home because he was all dressed in black, and Phyllis harbors her own suspicions about how Katie, and she asks how Katie and Will met, and there's a nice bit of backstory, which I liked here. We learned that Katie mentions how he came into her bar before he joined the FBI, and I do think that part of that is true, but obviously the rest is a lie. And we know, of course, that Will and Katie are hiding really who they are, and the good news, according to Phyllis, is now that the family is totally safe, they're going to have increased protection and make sure every neighbor knows to be vigilant. But it's a promise that clearly makes Katie feel uncomfortable, because she doesn't want people constantly watching her and constantly protecting her. She wants to do that on her own, obviously. This is not really something that Katie wants people to be there for. She wants to be able to do this on her own. So when Will finally meets up with her, she just tells him that she wants to go home and... This sets Will off. He goes directly to Phyllis, demands to know what she said to his wife, because obviously Katie's really upset about this, and I love how protective Will is of Katie, but again, he has no idea that Katie's the one that did all this, but Phyllis has more important things to talk about him, namely, when they search his house, they found Bram's tapes of Geronimo in his bedroom. Now, you knew this was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen this quickly, but knowing that there's Homeland Security on them, it, it makes sense, and she offers to keep them hidden, at least for now, but urges him to make sure there's nothing else he's missed that might get him in trouble and uh basically the rest of the episode is kind of dealing with that well that and homeland security obviously but basically we then start to learn a bit more about maddie here it seems like she's getting smart to know how to maneuver herself into situations that will benefit her and her sick son and we also learn in this episode that maddie actually lives directly next door to will and katie and frequently she visits them her son even has a really i think kind of cute relationship with gracie i really like that i thought it was kind of cute and 
We know now that Maddie works in the green zone, which we start to learn a bit more what the green zone is. It seems to be a recruiting agency of some sort for well-off individuals who need help from the lower class. And uh, last week, of course, we saw her working at a fancy party and catering. And this week, her charge is a woman named Charlotte Burgess. And Maddie's job is to be her assistant in preserving pieces of artwork. And when Maddie overhears a conversation about a piece of art that they desperately need to get their hands on, she casually mentions that David, of course, that guy that she saw, um... She knows because she used to work in the gallery that sold it to him. So we start to find out a little bit more about David, and it's pretty clear that she, in fact, did sleep with David. Um, you know, basically, she did sleep with him, and I like that we, um, found this out, basically. Um, and Maddie further elaborates that she was just in his house and knows locations of his collections, which Charlotte is very keen on taking advantage of. She wants Maddie to work exclusively for her, and Maddie has no problem saying that she do it because she needs insulin for her son, which, again, that's something that you can't get in this world. You have to do whatever you can to get insulin, and Katie's going to do whatever she can, you know, I mean, Maddie's going to do whatever she can to get that insulin. So good character development for Maddie this week. I like seeing that, especially because we didn't get a lot of Maddie last week. I like that we saw a lot of her in this episode. We got a lot to do. She had a lot to do in this one. So after the redheads bring Katie home, Will confronts his son about the tapes, and Bram tells his father that he knows when and where Geronimo's messages are coming from because it's on the posters. There's a hidden signal broadcast written on the back that lets people know when to listen, and Will promises he's going to fix this situation, and when Will makes a promise that involves his family, of course he's going to go through with it. So Katie goes to the Resistance hideout, but Broussard isn't there. There's a bit of cryptic talk about why, and Katie's shown people coming and going from the green zone. She's asked to point out Will's boss, and Katie's hesitant and wants to guarantee her husband will be safe because there's only so much stress she can take with these missions. And once her request is granted, she gives them a face to put with a name and unknowingly puts an entire new plan in action. So we then hear Geronimo, who we now know may or may not actually be Geronimo. This might just be some guy that's pretending to be Geronimo. He gives another address about last Last week's raid, and this time though we do see his face, he also doesn't bother to hide himself after the broadcast, allowing Will to take him in when they track his location. So Will blames him for the fire in their home, but then realizes he's probably not the man they're actually after. Snyder though has gone all out, told everyone they've captured the man behind it all, so it's a bit of a downer when Will smartly says he doesn't think he's the mastermind behind all this, which would make sense because Geronimo wouldn't just blindly stay, you know, wouldn't just stay somewhere where someone could find him. He's obviously hiding out. This guy's covering up for Geronimo, and who Geronimo really is, we don't really know. So, Will figures, though, that Geronimo is actually in the green zone, while Phyllis tells him that she destroyed his son's tapes, and when Will gets home, he won't tell Katie what's wrong. Of course, he's not going to, because she's also dealing with a lot of stress, and he doesn't want to get her involved, And but he will tell her that he loves her. He knows that the photo that's been taken down assumes it's due to the fire, eventually finding it hidden on the top of the fridge, and after Katie leaves to open the bar, Will goes to see Bram, promising that he took care of the situation. He then asks Bram why he listens to Geronimo in the first place, and Bram and that he likes Geronimo because he actually gives him hope and this is something that a lot of people in the world they don't have they don't really have hope but Bram he wants to have that hope he wants to have that hope he wants to make sure that you know everyone does and because he's the only one that believes someday things might change and I just really love that scene very meaningful stuff they're really doing a great job of Bram's character I really felt he was gonna be very underused and or annoying or something like that but no I'm really enjoying his character and you really see that he just wants to make a difference and I really like seeing that because isn't that what Will wants to do as well he kind of wants to make a difference it's clear that Will's realizing that there are certain things he can't do but Bram really does want to do something and I really like seeing that so at the young, Katie's greeted by a surprise visitor after trying to act civil over a drink. Phyllis is the surprise visitor. She launched into a story about her own husband, who was a military-type man named Ed, and she drops a few subtle references about doing a job she never told her husband about, and you start to learn that, Kate, that Phyllis pretty much went through what Katie went through, because she clearly had to be in the resistance, and she did not tell her husband about this, and then gives Katie a folder of photos from last week's raid with evidence that Katie's with the resistance. She is convinced that Katie is part of the resistance, and obviously, Phyllis also knows that Katie and Will are married. She knows this, and Phyllis is quietly threatening, but it's clear that she's treating this like a power play more than anything else. She merely tells Katie that the people she works with aren't the kind of people she should want to be, and uh, now Katie works for her, and well, Katie's pretty much backed into too much of a corner not to take the offer, so basically, she's telling Katie, look, I want you to leave the resistance and come work for me. So this is very interesting, because then we get to the ending of this episode, and I don't know what's gonna happen here. We see Phyllis returns home, 
home. She gets a mysterious phone call, and it says, you know, she tells the person that today was a misstep, and basically, she says that she has a new asset, and she thinks she'll be pretty valuable, and we surprise learn that Phyllis's husband is actually still alive, though he's clearly not recovering from his coma-like state anytime soon. We're even more surprised to see who's waiting for her. It's Broussard! So, Broussard and Phyllis are definitely working together, and Phyllis isn't entirely surprised either. She doesn't even seem scared. Her only request that Broussard kills her husband, and you think he's gonna do that, but do he doesn't. He kills Phyllis, and that's how the episode ends. He sticks on his red hat, walks away, and that's how this ends. So, holy shit, Broussard and Phyllis are working together. I, I can't get over this. I mean, this is insane that these two are working together. But let's talk about the fact that this job offer that she just gave Katie, what's gonna happen here? Because Phyllis just died. She's dead. What's gonna happen now? I mean, obviously, Katie can't take this, but I definitely feel like Katie definitely is starting to feel pressure, knowing that Phyllis is telling her this is not what you should be doing. I could definitely see Katie at some point definitely telling Will what she's doing, because obviously, I really feel that Phyllis made her seem like she's not doing something good and obviously I think Katie wants to do something about that so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what she does there. Broussard. This reveal that Broussard is with, um, you know, the Red Hats is very interesting. It really does make sense though because Broussard always seems like he's a very calculated guy that's always doing his job and... <laughs> It's clear that he really doesn't have a lot of remorse, and definitely very interesting stuff, and I really am interested in seeing what's going to happen there. Um, as far as this whole situation with Geronimo, who is Geronimo really? Clearly, he's hiding out. He doesn't want to be noticed, and I like seeing that. I like seeing that we don't really know who Geronimo is. Definitely very interesting, and I also like what they're doing with Maddie, having Maddie um, with this insulin, trying to get it for her son. I mean, she's going to get caught at some point, but right now, I'm glad that it's working for her, but I could definitely see something happening there at some point we'll have to see what happens but overall guys amazing episode love this episode i know i didn't have a lot to say about this episode but a lot of the episode was just this fire that happened and just it was so crazy without a doubt the best episode of the season i absolutely loved this episode colony just got picked up for a second season which i am so happy about because i am really loving this show probably one of my favorite shows to watch honestly out of all the shows i'm watching but let me know what you guys saw this show i loved this episode i thought this was a fantastic one really hard to watch at points definitely but very revealing and i love the reveals i love that we are getting to that point we still don't know everything that's going on and Katie, you can tell, is definitely feeling pressure. She wants to tell Will what's going on. And I love the scenes as well between Katie and Gracie in this episode. I mean, you can just tell that Gracie is the only innocent one here. She has no idea what's going on. She doesn't even know that there are raps or anything like that. And I'm sure that... Bram has an idea, but Gracie really isn't doing anything because at that age, you believe anything your parents tell you, and Gracie's not gonna, you know, question it because when you're a kid, that's just how it is. You believe anything your parents tell you. Your parents are always right, and you're always wrong. That's how it always is, and I think Gracie is just used to that mentality, and that's why Gracie isn't really getting all that suspicious, which is very interesting. But overall, guys, I'm not sure you guys saw this episode. Like I said, I thought this was the strongest one so far. Absolutely love this episode, and we'll see you guys in the next one, which will be for the Vampire Diaries, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.